Welcome back to the Gen 20 Podcast. I'm Nicole. And I'm Marina. Today we're talking about vulnerability, what it means and why it matters. So what is vulnerability? What does it mean to be vulnerable? We have all these questions. Um, I looked up the definition just with uh, Merriam Webster online. And she says, or he says, I don't know how they, what their pronouns are, but a lot, the, the vulnerability is the quality or state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked or harmed either physically or emotionally. So to me, that means that basically when you're vulnerable, you are opening yourself up to criticism or rejection by sharing your honest thoughts and feelings. And when you're vulnerable, you offer more of your authentic self, which can be really scary. Nicole, what does vulnerability mean for you? So I think that a lot of times we put vulnerability together with the word weakness. Mm -hmm. And we think that when we're showing how we're vulnerable, that that makes us weak or that we're going to be perceived as weak or our vulnerabilities are our weaknesses. And I don't think that's true. I think a lot of times like when you imagine the word vulnerable, what I see in my head is kind of we're sitting in a dark room next to each other Mm -hmm. you know we're telling our deepest darkest secrets and I'm just hoping and praying that you never repeat them you know but I think that it's it's more important now than ever that we start to embrace vulnerability in our everyday moments and our everyday conversations and our relationships especially and now a word from our sponsor Do you ever feel like you're stuck on the island of misfit careers? Like everyone around you seems to have their career together, but here you are in a soul-sucking job for what feels like the hundredth time. Why is it so hard to find work that makes you happy? My friend, you are not alone in feeling this way. Let me introduce you to Serena and get me out of this job. Get me out of this job is a career coaching program that helps you find confidence and clarity in the next steps of your career. Serena helps you build a career around your life instead of feeling like you have to build your life around your career. No more diving into jobs that aren't the right fit for you anymore. No more living on the aisle of misfit careers. And the best part? Mention Gen 20 and get 10% off your coaching package. Head to getmeoutofthisjob.co to learn more or follow her on Instagram at getmeoutofthisjob. Oh, absolutely. I I, I want to laugh when you're talking about the dark, the like image of sitting in the dark because I feel like in high school when you're like making these bonds, you know, high school was just, it was high school. So you're mm-hmm. making these bonds with your friends. You're getting a whisper of independence. You're, I just remember I would ride in the car with friends and I had a, a best guy friend and we would go on these long drives and just talk about our biggest fears. And it was so exhilarating and validating because I grew up um, kind of being shown that I wasn't allowed to have big, like I had anxiety and I had all these big feelings and I was kind of shown that in order to make it through, I shouldn't have them. And so, yeah, that their vulnerability seemed like big professions of deep fears when really it's, it can be so small as saying like, I'm trying to, on the fly, I'm trying to think of a good, good. Well, you you were just very vulnerable when you said that you grew up with anxiety. Oh yeah. But to me, that's an example of vulnerability. Yeah. See, but I talk about my anxiety all the time. That I'm like, eh, old hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an anxious person. <laughs> we know. But but for me, learning, I've been working really hard in the last year to to learn my boundaries and set them. And that to me is is a vulnerability when you are you know you're putting yourself out there for a potentially negative response when you set a boundary because oftentimes when you set boundaries it's because the people in your lives need them to be set and they don't like it mm-hmm. but yeah mm-hmm. but vulnerability it it can be such a small thing yeah it doesn't have to be like this big grand confession um where like only one person or two people three people whatever know these secrets about you i think it's just, it's, you know that you're about to be vulnerable when you feel like a little uncomfortable about what you're going to share, I think, mm-hmm. and you get a little bit of that like anxiousness feeling. Um, and I think a lot of examples of vulnerability in like daily life, for example, would be asking for help. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, Especially because if we're if we're growing up in the subscription of vulnerability equals weakness, then asking for help equals weakness. 
And like, spoiler alert, we don't subscribe to that at this podcast. Like, let's mm-hmm. ask for help. Mm-hmm. Let's let's shout our vulnerabilities or whisper them, whichever. But yeah, um, and I asking for help can be so hard because it could be you have a problem at work and you need help, or you have a problem with one of your friends and you need help, or you just like admitting that something's wrong. That's vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think what's something that comes to mind when you mention work now is I think you've mentioned this in several episodes we've already recorded. I'm not sure if people have heard them. Probably. I'm yeah. laughing because I'm like, oh, I know what's coming. Um, it's. I think it's when you've mentioned when you've asked for feedback at past jobs and you've gotten really negative and really useless responses mm-hmm. because it is hard to say, hey, person who is supposed to be leading me um, how can I do this better? And they're like, well, just do X, just do Y, just do Z. And then like, that's not helpful. And it just makes you feel worse about yourself. Yeah. And I think it makes you not want to seek out this feedback and like open yourself up to that kind of thing in the future. Right. If asking for feedback is opening your, like is being vulnerable because you're mm-hmm. admitting that there's room for you to grow. And that's like mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. Side note, we want to grow. We want to mm-hmm. have room to grow. If we're not growing, we're basically no longer of this living plane. So mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I think like admitting you don't know something is really, vo- is a vulnerability. I remember once, this is what I was laughing because I thought this was the story you were going to bring up, Nicole. <laughs> but I remember once admitting I didn't know something and being told by my manager that mm-hmm. I shouldn't do that. Yeah. And I was yeah. just thinking like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 was, it did not work out for us. I did not stay there. Um, but yeah, that's, it's okay to not know things. Like the great yeah. thing about knowing, not knowing things is that you get to learn them. And so I hope we can all work on being a little bit more vulnerable in sharing yeah. what we do, do not know. And now a word from our sponsor, Give a Damn Goods. Give meaningful gifts this holiday season by shopping with Give a Damn Goods. Give a Damn Goods is an online boutique focused on affordable and ethical and sustainable gifts. The socially responsible boutique encourages customers to recognize their purchase power by connecting them with the stories behind their products and showcasing their small business partners. Discover eco-friendly t-shirts, holiday candles, unique gift boxes, and more. Give a damn, shop small, and give the people you love meaningful gifts this holiday season. Use code PODCAST for 15% off your first order. I was three, and he asked a lot of questions, and I'm like, wow, I have never felt more dumb than I do right now. But, like, I'm just like, I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Um, And that's really humbling, I have to say. Yeah. I like the, uh, I don't know, what do you think this reason is? Yeah. Because then you get weird toddlerisms, and you're like, great. Yeah, that's fabulous. That's exactly the answer I was looking for. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I think just, yeah, just admitting that you don't know something, it's not even admitting. Like, it's just yes, no, and I don't know are perfectly fine answers. Like, it doesn't make you weak to not know everything. Like, we we all don't know everything. Yeah, there's one. Oh, sorry, I didn't interrupt you. But there's one philosopher, and I always mix him up because I'm not a philosophy expert. But it's like Socrates, I think, where he ba- – or maybe Plato. Anyway, basically his whole mantra was I I'm don't I don't know what I don't know. And that's okay. Like I, I'm I'm gonna get emails about this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I remember thinking about it, like the only thing I know is that I don't know. And I just like, wow, that's really humbling and it makes it okay to be cur- like I I'm a very curious person. I love that about myself. I love that about other people Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who aren't, who don't just accept something as baseline, who think, oh, let me, let me learn more about it. Let me, let me poke at it. That's, that's great. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. So quality. Yeah. And I think we have to be a little bit vulnerable when we're doing that for the first time because we're we're growing up in a society where you're supposed to know everything and you can't have any weakness and all that mm-hmm. bull. Exactly, exactly. And I think 
kind of jumping back to what you were saying earlier when you were driving around with your friend in the car when you would share like your deepest fears Mm -hmm. where like in high school your deepest fears feel so heavy but yeah we have a lot of hormones we have a lot of know what heavy is at that time in our lives honestly has anyone sent you a bill yet no (laughs) have you had to decide between paying for gas and buying groceries no no (laughs) so yeah but I think sharing your fears like because it's scared when, you know, like I might be afraid of being rejected. I might be afraid of being told no. Mm-hmm. And those are perfectly acceptable and valid things to be afraid of. But they don't define who you are as a person. They don't define your worth. And for just as many no's as you hear, you'll hear just as many yeses. Exactly. And I think in I think about vulnerability a lot in dating because I – I'm always like open to the opportunity to meet someone, right? And for so long, my thought process was if someone sees me, they won't like me, so I can't be myself. And that's just like you just fail by default with that method. And so now Mm -hmm. I try to just be really honest because when we come back to this idea of rejection and the no's, if, if I'm myself and someone, it's not for someone, that's okay. Because that means that there's like somebody else who it is right for who will have space mm-hmm. to be part mm-hmm. of it. And so I think I think vulnerability could also be likened to authenticity. So if you know who you are and what you stand for and how you want to live your life and you act that way, that's acting very vulnerably because you're just accepting that you don't have to put up a front to be accepted. You're just going to be yourself and you might be rejected. You might be ridiculed or all of the negative verbs that could be associated with vulnerability. We don't know them. We don't know them. We don't, not in our dictionary. (laughs) Miriam who? (laughs) But, (laughs) but, but if you do that and you live with this authenticity of just, I'm going to be myself and you live better. Mm -hmm. And you make deeper connections and it's not necessarily trauma bonding where you both are talking about something horrible that happened to you that's really deep in your biggest fear. It's, oh, wow, you're a little bit weird in this way and I'm weird in that way too. And I'm so glad you showed me your weirdness so that I can show you mine and let's go be weird together. We're vibing. We're vibing. Yeah. So I I, I think about vulnerability a lot, so I have a lot of opinions about it, but I'm (laughs) – it's, it's a hard thing to do and you have to practice at it, but it's so rewarding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it's really easy to be more vulnerable with like your inner circle, like your core mm-hmm. circle of friends. Um, and like so much so that like, I don't think there's anything that I would ever tell Marina that I would feel uncomfortable telling her. The things I've told Nicole guys. I know. Like, the things I've just, called her about. It's basically just like talking to myself at this point. <laughs> but I love like, it. a good way. <laughs> I think our friendship has gotten to the point where like the weirder it is I'm like I gotta immediately stop and call Nicole about this thing yeah that's true that's true which is beautiful yeah I love you I love you Mm -hmm. the best we're not friends we're sisters it's yeah it's true we're yeah it's Mm -hmm. deeper than friendship it's deeper yeah and but I think that that a relationship we built took time and vul- and time and vulnerability because yeah yeah we have been working on this friendship since like 2013 mm-hmm. yeah and- we were we were talking about this we didn't meet in person until 2016 that was only mm-hmm. five years ago yeah but it feels like a whole lifetime I know I feel like I've we've been friends my whole life and so I forget that there's times that you weren't technically a part of yeah that you still have to explain to me a little bit. Yeah. But it's okay. I catch on quick. Yeah. I've told you everything already, so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I like – what I really hope that people get out of this episode is that it's okay to open yourself up to other people, and it's okay if people don't vibe with that. Like, you know. Yeah. No no skin off your back. Just keep moving. But keep really being authentic to who you are and what you want out of life and to your boundaries and – just sharing yourself in the most truest way possible. Yeah, absolutely. One more thing I want to add to that is that, at least for me, in the last 
we'll call it two years of just, you know, we all know what happened in the last two years. But in the last two years, I've really focused on like getting to the root of who I am and and why I do things and what I want out of life. And so I in in doing that, I've practiced being vulnerable in really small and medium sized ways with my family and friends and strangers. And in being vulnerable with people, I've learned to be vulnerable with myself, which has led to me accepting myself and loving myself for exactly who I am, good or not as great qualities. And so being vulnerable isn't just something that you extend outward, it's something you can hold inward. And this comes back to that word authenticity. The more authentic you are with yourself, the less you hide from yourself, the happier you'll be. Because I think we hide from the things we're afraid of. And then the fear is a heavy, painful thing. But you don't have to be afraid to be yourself. You don't have to be afraid of who you are. You're inherently valuable and worthy and important for all of like the weirder, the better for all of your quirks. And so if you are vulnerable with yourself too, you're just going to get so much more out of, out of your life. Exactly. Okay. Wait, we didn't do an outro. I was about to do it. (laughs) This has been another episode of the Gen 20 podcast. We'd love if you leave a rating review and we'll see you again soon. Bye.